So, right. So, so the question is really how do I use this? How do I implement these schemes? Particularly for something that is a little bit more complex than du dt equal to lambda u. What if I have a nonlinear function f of u? All right, what do I do? So let's start with backward Euler. And uh, the other scheme is basically the same, right? Um, let's actually say I have this equal to f of u n plus 1, where f is a known function, but it's not just the lambda times u. So what I have is, let me rewrite this in a way that I want to use green to represent all the terms we know and the red represent all the terms we don't know. We find out we have more than one terms that we don't know, u n plus 1 and f of u n plus 1. They are related, but like uh, I can't just uh, evaluate, I can't just uh, use this equation in a straightforward way to compute u n plus 1. All right. So how do I use this for a nonlinear equation? Well, it turns out the easiest way to use that is actually the following. If I know delta t is very small, for example, if delta t is very small and my ODE is very nice, so that I know the difference between un plus 1 and un is also very small. Then I can approximate f of un plus 1 using a different Taylor series analysis. Right? I mean, we have been using Taylor series analysis for the function u as a function of t. Now it's time to use the same thing for the function f. How do we use it? How do we use Taylor series on fun the function f to make this a uh, nonlinear equation easier to solve? I want to expand this with respect to u, but with re at which point? I'm expanding f of un plus 1 at which point? Right, so so let's let's say Taylor series expansion is like this. I have a function f of u as a function of u. Uh, hmm? Where is equilibrium? Oh, the roots of f of yeah, but like I, 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 I only know at this point U U N is the only thing I know, right? So I have F of U. But I don't know where this U N plus one is, right? This point is not something I know. So the best thing to do is I want to expand F of U N plus one, which let me let me actually write it as a red thing, right? because this is not something we know, f of u n plus 1 is equal to, first of all, f of u n, that's something we know, right? Plus, okay, something we don't know, which is u n plus 1 minus u n, right? Times what? Df Times df du, which is at where? At u n, which is something we know, right? So, okay, so of course this is not exactly equal, it's approximate. But if the time step is small and the un plus 1 minus un is small, then this is pretty good. All right, so I can, uh, I can then plug this into the equation and uh, the equation now becomes un plus 1 minus something we know, un divided by delta t is actually something we know, is equal to uh, something we know, f of u n plus the derivative, which is something we know, times this thing we don't know, right? Okay, now how is this easier to solve? Hmm? We've got yeah, we always get one unknown. Here, we also get one unknown. Yes, because this becomes a linear equation for that unknown, right? Previously, we had a nonlinear equation for that unknown. Now, we have a linear equation for that unknown. We have used the power of Taylor series analysis that converted a nonlinear equation 
into approximately a linear one. Okay, so then the step becomes uh, uh, just uh, pretty simple. I just uh, combine the terms. The left hand side, uh, I'm gonna move everything that is red. Uh, this minus df du times un plus 1 is going to be equal to everything that is green uh, un divided by delta t plus f of un plus un times df du un all right minus. oh minus yeah yeah thank you minus all right, or another way to um, let's see. Do, do, do. Another way to pose this is because both sides involve this u n uh, minus u u n plus one minus u n. Or another way to write this is a uh, one over delta t minus d f d u times this unknown, which is the delta u, right? would be equal to just the f of un, right? So usually this is something we solve. All right, of course this is only approximate. This is not exact because we use the Taylor series expansion which assumes this is small enough. So what if you, after you solve this equation, you find, oops, un plus one minus un is actually not that small. What would you do? Or a better way to check it is actually, now you computed un plus one, right? By solving this equation. You can just plug back into this equation to see how these two sides are not satisfied. I mean, if it's pretty good, you are pretty happy. Otherwise, you need to do something else, yeah? Can we? Because now we have your and your and plus one, and we know that they're big difference. They can number between both of them, mm -hmm. and which is closer to one of them. Right. Okay. So so now we know. Now now we we have a un plus one that may not be the real answer, but now we have a un plus one that is hopefully much closer to the true answer than un, right? So, we can perform another Taylor series expansion, now around what? Yeah, now around this guess of un plus 1. So let's actually take this as a, a, a guess, right? Because now we wrote this as equal. So let me actually use a superscript 1, because this is my first iteration, as you said, my first iteration for this un plus 1. Okay? And then I'm just going to be doing Taylor series expansion on this again and again. So every time what I'm doing is I'm solving. So this is the algorithm is for i is equal to 2, 3, etc. So here I have a u1, right? un plus 1, my first initial guess. Then for my subsequent guesses, I want to take this term and expand on the previous best solution. So I want to say that my un plus 1 i guess minus un over delta t is going to be equal to Taylor series expansion of this guy, f of un plus 1 i minus 1. So this is my previous best guess, which is the basis of the uh, Taylor series expansion. Right, this is the linear term in the Taylor series expansion times df du at uh, my previous best guess, right? I'm just going to uh, not write that for now. So this again is a linear equation to solve for this number that involves this unknown. Everything else is known, yes? I, I just 
the other um, high like the UN plus two or something is going to be those things are active answer. Why wouldn't you use some number between the and the plus one? The part we're taking is the N plus one is I guess the same investment the closer to our view plus one. So why are we taking this why are we taking this guy as opposed to an average between these? Yeah. So you can take an average between these, but it turns out this, just using these, is going to give you the fastest convergence. Okay? And, and actually, uh, that's actually not always the, I, I take my word back, that's not always the case. This is only true when your initial guess is close enough to the actual solution. So when your initial guess is actually cl close enough to the actual solution, taking the UN plus one I is going to give you the fastest convergence. But if this is far away, actually, there are various schemes of actually taking the average between them to actually get to the point uh, in a more stable way. So the scheme of what I just wrote out here actually is the so-called uh, Newton's method of solving nonlinear equations. I'm just uh, specializing it to the forward order case.